All right. All right, in titration. All right, so you did some calculations last night. Okay, that was great. You did some calculations last night of titrations. A little bit. Maybe you didn't really know exactly what you were doing, but you could get to the answer and you figured out what we're doing. All right, so in titration, I don't think I left any blanks for you on this one because you need to highlight and or circle. All right, a solution of acrylic known concentration, which will do titration. You have to be able to do titrations. We did some last year. All right, a solution is acrylic known. Uh, called a standard solution is gradually added to another solution of unknown concentration until the chemical reaches two solutions is complete. So it's gonna it's gonna go. You're gonna have a, a, a change of color. And let's see the point with the uh, at which the acid has completely reacted or has been neutralized by the base is called the equivalence point. Equivalence point. Okay. You always need to find that. All right. So when you're doing this. Most titration curves, all right, kind of look like that. You're going to have the equal valence point right in the middle of that line. If you go over it, it's going to go up and down. So you can go one way or the other on a graph. But the equal valence point is right in the middle of the two. You're going to do that using Vernier software. You're going to actually see it being created, that graph line, as you're adding in, all right? the uh, base or the acid, whatever the standard solution is. All right, the end point at which the solution should change color to the indicator, which changes color at or near the equivalence point. Okay, so many times solid uh, sodium hydroxide is not pure because of it's, it absorbs uh, water from air. That's why we always say cap your chemicals in the lab. That's why I'm going to stick for it because then it's no longer the same element, it's the same compound. Um, so we have to have, we're unsure of its exact molarity, we must standardize the solution. When you standardize it, it's going to use acid-based titration technique in order to verify the molarity the unknown solution is. All right, so this is something that you all are required to do. This is something that is asked upon you, one of your, one of your 16 labs. This will be lab kind of number two-ish. All right, I might do one more, um, you know, synthesis of silver oxide or something like that. But this is the, one of the labs you are responsible for that is tested upon every couple of years or so on the AP exam. But it also is good for identifying, you know, how much of uh, doing those calculations, which are always on the AP exam. All right, so let's talk about this picture right here. This is what the apparatus setup looks like. All right, so you carry this out by the titration. So when you go in the lab, you need a butterfly clamp. All right, let me just go through and label some things just so you know what they are. All right, how many of you have titrated before? Yeah, we did. All right, you definitely did. All right, so this here is a butterfly clamp. Butterfly clamp. Uh, ring sand. All right. And you have your Erlenmeyer flask, right? And you have your biurette or burette, whatever you want to say. Yeah, we did. Yeah. All right. And then right here is the standard solution, whatever that may be, whatever I give to you. All right. So you want to listen, maybe take some notes as we go if I don't write something on the board. Um, the, a solution of accurately known concentration called a standard solution is added gradually to another substance, all right, uh, of unknown concentration to the chemical reaction between the two solutions is complete. You will put the known in this. I'm sorry, th this is where you're going to put the known, the standard. I, I'm sorry, this is the, this here is the indicator, sorry. Sorry about that. Indicator, the standards in the biuret or buret, however you want to say it. Typically, here is the key. That little bottle at the bottom, which is AKA a AP type, just random question you have to know. Um, this indicator such as phenyl thaline. Phenyl thaline. Had to know an IV, you have to know an AP. Phenyl thaline will indicate the solution has become basic by turning pink as you see in B. 
phenylphthalein. It's weird. You have to know phenylphthalein. And we'll also talk about the five other ones that you have to know and where they fall into line with their indicators. So throughout the year, you have to know five indicators and how they affect the lab, what you use. They're all affected by pH. And every year, two, one to three problems are on the AP exam about an indicator. All right. Um, at this point, you stop the reaction and calculate the volume of base and acid that was added. Right? So what kind of equation do you think I'm going to right now? You have to calculate the, the volume and the molarity of, of the base. Well, the, both volumes of how much you had in the bottom and what I had in the other one. You have volume one and volume two. So what am I trying to get to? It's like the M1. M1, V1 equals M2, V2. When you're kind of doing some of these, M1, V1 equals M2, V2, not R2, D2. But these are, this is the equation you're getting to. Because I have a volume here, and I had some volume in here to begin with. Maybe I put 10 mils in here. I added a drop of my pedal failing. And then this went down to 14. So volume 1, 14, volume 2, 10. This has a known molarity, right? This is going to have a known molarity. And then your equation becomes pretty easy, right? Your equation is going to be pretty easy because I have my volume with my known molarity, and then I did not know the molarity, but I knew my volume. These two divided by this one gives you molarity one. Right? It's pretty easy. When you kind of see it, it's in a book. It doesn't really make sense. Maybe you're not understanding what it was, but you know known volume, no molarity because you made the standard solution. All right. Then if you know the molarity in either of the acid or base, you can calculate the molarity of the unknown. Uh, you can also, you might have to do some stoic in there too, so don't forget that. I'm going to put this in here. you got to do some stoic, which we did for homework. You did some stoichiometry for that. Kind of remember, you have to be able to put the fractions. Sometimes you have 1 over 250 or 250 over 1, whatever that may be. And again, at the point at which the moles of acid have neutralized the moles of base, the pH is equal to 7. It's called the equal balance point. So the equal balance point is typically around 7 is 7. Yes? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? No, oh, oh. I was going to ask you another question. Oh, this is kind of like random though, but like in the workbook when they had into those problems, yeah. we, the molarity is more over liters. So why were they constantly giving us the volume in milliliters? I found that kind of like pointless. Well, the whole point is, do you think I could fit more than 100 milliliters in that burette? All right. Are you going to make a batch of wine or alcohol that requires a 2,500 liter tank in your house? Not like my basement where I'm making you know, got a whole bunch of fertilizer just waiting to make some bombs. <laughs> no. Um, so typically, everything you're going to be doing is in milliliters. All right. There's never any time you're going to be using massive amounts of water and AKA liters. So everything is going to be in milliliters, and it just Anytime you do that, remember, if you're given a molarity, let's just say you're given a molarity of one that was in the homework, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. All right? It's the same as saying this, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 7th moles, and then you put 1,000 milliliters. And then you don't have to do any other conversions. Right? And then all of a sudden, then you don't have to add the extra 1,000 and all that. Just make over 1,000. That's, that's how I do it. I just, about 1,000 milliliters. 1,000 milliliters, one year 1,000 milliliters. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's work out a problem here. All right, let me see if I can get a blank page. Let's see if I can work out a problem. All right, let's do a problem together. Up the top. Spike or over here? All right, so let's see. So we found a student finds uh, to have zero point, just add this kind of on the back or something of your thing. Zero point five six eight grams KHP. I can go over what KHP is, but it's. Uh, go ahead, I'll do it. one that you use is needed 
to neutralize 23.48 milliliters of NaOH solution. All right, so if we have that, what is the concentration and molarity of NaOH? NaOH concentrate. Yeah. All right, so it makes sense. So we have, we use that many grams. We neutralized it, 23.48 of NaOH. At the equal balance point, it's a pH of seven. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna have to do is figure out how many moles of KHP we have. All right, so we gotta figure out our moles of KHP. All right, can anybody help me out with that? Calculators fired up, fired up the calculators. give you this, I'm sorry, let me go ahead and write it out. I have to give you the K H C A H four O four plus N A O H makes the K N A C eight All right, so I give you that kind of equation there. You'd be given that equation. Uh, the, it is balanced already. All I did was take the OH and the H and the KH, made the water, and put the sodium and the potassium in together. That's all I did. Not anything different. You'd be given that. You would not have to know how to do that. There's not at every point in AP where you have to write an equation like that. Make it feel good? Good. All right. All right, so anybody have the number of moles for me? What do I have to do? All right, so let's see. So you got 0. 0.00, so you did uh, 0. 0.568, one mole. And what do you have on the bottom? 204 point. I'm going to just make it a little bit more nice for me because we always want to go at least a tenth or the hundredth. Remember, because then, remember, like I said, if you didn't go to the 10th or 100th, at least the 100th in your homework, you were off by a little bit every time on your answers, right? So if you go a little bit farther, your answers will always check. And when I do that, I get 2.678 times 10 to the negative per moles of that. All right? Mole AHP, which is a lot nicer than writing that. Okay? Uh, so now we look at the equation, and what can you tell me about the moles and the moles of KHP and the moles of uh, sodium hydroxide? What can you tell me? What can you tell me about these moles right here? Let me switch colors. All right, let me switch colors here. Hopefully I can do that. What can you tell me about these moles here and these moles here? What's the ratio? One to one. One to one. So one mole KHP. Yes? 2 point what? Am I backwards? 2.78? All right, I'll change it. I just added all these up. Right, I just added all those up. All right, so this is, I'm, I'm off by this a little bit. 2.78. Thank you. Here. 2.78. All right. So that means I have how many moles of NaOH? 2.78. All right, so 2.78 times 10 to the negative third. 10 to the negative third, right? Sorry. All right, and I have how many moles and how many liters do I have? That is per, how many milliliters do I have of NaOH? 
So I put that on the bottom, 23.48 milliliters. From here, because it's NaOH, we figure out moles of NaOH right there. So we put that there. And then we have to convert it to liters. Uh, convert it to liters because it's moles per liter. So I would just take, very simply, I could make it if you wanted, or you could do it at the end. Get rid of your milliliters. And that will give you your answer. 0.118 molar NaOH. I'm going to go ahead and box it so nobody thinks I have the wrong answer. I'm a good student. All right, so that's the only spot. You could do this all in as you did your homework. You can do this all in one step, right? You could just have mole to mole ratio here. I just didn't have enough room. Mole to mole, then add this part and do that. Would you like me to rework it that way? Good. I understand. You can split it up. There's no, like, there's no demand that you have everything all together. The only thing that matters is that, right? You can you can split it three different ways if you want it, four different ways. It doesn't matter. All that matters at the end is the right answer. Okay. Now you have a problem on the next page, a diprotic. All right, a diprotic. All right, so let's take a look at this. I, I left the solution on there for you. All right, I left the solution on, on there, but we're not finishing it. How many milliliters of a 0.610 molar sodium hydroxide solution are needed? I clocked a little fast, we're going to finish just on top. Needed to neutralize 20.0 mils of a 2.245 molar sulfuric acid solution. All right, so the equation for the reaction, as you see on your paper, everybody agree with me that that is the first equation? Everybody agree? It's diprotic. So notice that we need twice the amount of sodium hydroxide as we do in order to neutralize the diprotic sulfuric acid. This is because, as we talked about earlier, you're going to have to do two of them. It's going to have to ionize twice. All right. So if you're thinking about it outside the box, why the balance equation is on the top, you look at the next two because you're going to have to neutralize that mole of, in the above equation, one mole of hydroxide will neutralize one mole of H plus. Okay. So you got to pull it out. You're going to have two separate parts. So therefore, we need all right, two moles of H2SO4. And let's try to finish this problem. And we'll, we're going to do it together and slash on your own. You're going to help me through it because I need help. I don't even know what I'm doing. All right, so let's try to figure this out. Maddie, you ready? You're going to help me out? You have everything on that page. We're going to get to the gas forming reactions. We're going to be perfect on time. All right. You're ready? You didn't say you sound too confident with yourself. Ready? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so let's figure out the moles of H2SO4 that we have. All right, you have to be looking at the problem to figure out what the numbers were in the problem. I don't have the problem up anymore. You have the slide in front of you. Okay, who could tell me what the moles of H2SO4 that we have? What are the moles? No, moles is a number in the problem. Zero point, okay, I'm going to put it down here. Zero point two four five mole H2SO4 per what? Per what? A thousand milliliters. Let's make it easy on ourselves. One thousand milliliters. Why are we doing milliliters? Because it has Mills in the problem. All right, so now we have to figure out how many moles of H2SO4 we have. How, what else do I need to do? Got to get rid of my milliliters, and I have milliliters given to me in the problem at what? How many milliliters are given to me in the problem? 20. So 20 point milliliters. Now I can get rid of my milliliters, and I'm at moles. Got me? All right, so I'm at moles. Somebody help me out. Tell me how many moles I have. What? 
right, 4.90 times 10 to the negative third, something like that. 10 to the negative third mole H2SO4. Okay, so we got something. That's good, we got something. Now, we have to figure out the moles of NaOH reacted. NaOH reacted. And I know I'm moving, but some of you are bored. You already know how to do this. Moles of NaOH reacted. So again, we have figured out this. Again, we can keep that all going in one column, but let's go ahead and split it up. 4.90 times 10 to the negative third mole. NaOH. H2SO4. H2SO4. Then we're going to do our mole to mole ratio. What's our mole to mole ratio from the equation? One mole on the top or bottom? Bottom, one mole. H2SO4. Alright, now remember, you can put this all together and then two mole NaOH. When I do that, I get. What? Alright, 0.00 what? 98? Yeah. 9.8 tenths in the third. Mole NaOH. Alright, so now we have two moles. What would I do at this point? We have to go back and look at our problem. Volume of 0 0.61 molar NaOH to neutralize the H2SO4. So how am I going to plug all of this in? I have my moles of NaOH. Here we go. 9.80 times 10 to the negative third mole NaOH. Somebody help me out. What would I do next? Divide by what? Perfect. 0 0.610 mole NaOH, and then on the top would be 1,000 milliliters. All right, 1,000 milliliters, and that will give you your answer, which is, somebody help me, and then I'll be done. 16.1 right, 16 milliliters NaOH. Again, it doesn't all have to be split up, but in this case, you can do it.